Have you ever visualized a river thousands of kilometers long and so massive it could move water from one of the world's wettest regions to the driest? China's $62 billion South North Water Transfer Project is doing just that, aiming to solve the country's dire water crisis. China's northern regions have struggled with severe droughts for years, and now, with the help of this artificial river, they're looking to secure their future. But here's the catch. This project is so ambitious. It's been decades in the making, and it comes with huge environmental, financial, and political risks. Welcome to Big Builds. Can this man-made river actually solve China's water crisis, or is it a gamble too big to win? China is facing one of the world's most pressing water challenges, with its population going over 1.4 billion. The northern parts of the country are considerably drier than the eastern and southeast, which enjoy plentiful water supplies. Northern China, which is home to more than 160 million people and includes important cities such as Beijing and Tianjin, receives only around 14% of the country's water supply. The Yellow River has served as the primary water source for northern China for many years. However, starting in 1985, this river has been shrinking annually. This, along with the excessive extraction of aquifers and rivers, has resulted in the reduction of numerous lakes in the area. For example, Hebei province has already lost 969 of its 1,052 lakes. Despite the heavy tapping of northern China's water resources, water shortages continue to inflict significant economic damage. A report indicates that these shortages cause direct annual economic losses of $35 billion, a figure approximately two and a half times the annual losses caused by floods. In order to address such issues, China's government has proposed a very interesting project that transfers water from the southern regions to the northern regions. Thanks to the artificial river, this project is actually shaping into reality. The South North Water Transfer Project is one of the most ambitious projects that ensures equal distribution of water in the northern, more dry regions of China in order to address its water crisis. The concept was developed in 1952 when Mao Zedong attempted to address the growing water scarcity in northern China. Despite being innovative, Mao's idea was not implemented for decades. The project wasn't officially approved until 2002, despite the early concept. By this time, China, well, it's undergone significant industrialization, economic expansion, and population shifts, all of which made the northern water crisis worse. The Chinese government finally approved the South North Water Transfer Project on August 23, 2002. Three main routes have been created for the project, each of which is intended to meet distinct requirements around the nation. The South North Water Transfer Project's eastern route starts close to Yangzhou and uses the Yangshi River to pump water through the longest artificial waterway, the Jinghan Grand Canal. The water is then sent to Tianyin, a city near Beijing, after being carried across the Yellow River. The whole path spans over more than 1,100 kilometers, which is quite a feat in itself. The construction of this route kickstarted in 2002, with the aim of finishing it by 2013. But the project faced many challenges, which eventually led to its completion by 2017. At that point, the canal was effectively providing around 10 million people in Tianyin with around 1 billion cubic meters of water each year, which helped to somewhat alleviate the water shortages in northern China. The central route of the South North Water Transfer Project begins at the Danjiangku Reservoir, which has undergone considerable improvements to facilitate water movement. To improve water shortage capacity and enable better water flow, the Danjiangku Dam was elevated by 15 meters. Water travels through a complex network of artificial canals, aqueducts, and tunnels prior to arriving in Beijing. Spanning over 1,200 kilometers, the central route posed significant challenges, particularly due to the absence of pre-existing infrastructure, which made construction more complex and costly. Despite these hurdles, the construction of the route was completed by 2014. By 2022, approximately one-third of the water from the Han River was diverted to the northern regions. To enhance the system further, the Chinese government is constructing an underground tunnel that connects the Three Gorges Dam to the Ham River, ensuring a more dependable water supply. By 2030, the central route is expected to provide up to 12 cubic kilometers of water each year. The western route of the South North Water Transfer Project is currently under construction, and it aims to connect the Yangtze River 
to the Yellow River by crossing the challenging Qinghai Tibet Plateau, which is situated 3 to 5 kilometers above sea level. The suggested route encounters substantial challenges because of the area's rough mountainous landscape, earthquake activity, and severe weather conditions, rendering construction both technically and financially challenging. Consequently, the route's finalization is anticipated to be in 2050. If successfully executed, though, the western route might supply water to as many as 100 million individuals, significantly easing water shortage in northern China. Nonetheless, the proposal has raised global concerns, especially from neighboring nations like India, about the possible rerouting of water from cross-border rivers, such as the Brahmaputra and Mekong. Together, these three paths span thousands of kilometers and require the building of large canals, pipelines, and tunnels. The project encompasses a total of four significant rivers, the Yangshi, Yellow, Khoi, and Hai rivers. Now, let's discuss the controversies and challenges that this project has been facing. A significant problem is the high cost related to the project. Currently, total cost has exceeded $62 billion. This immense financial burden is shared between the central government and local authorities, but the latter have struggled to keep up with their share of the costs. In 2008, the estimated expenses for building the eastern and central routes of the South Water Transfer Project were $37.44 billion. However, the government allocated merely $7.9 billion, which is under a quarter of the overall expense. This budget comprised $3.7 billion from the national government, $1.1 billion from regional authorities, and almost $2.9 billion in borrowing. At that point, approximately $4.3 billion had been expended with $0.8 billion allocated to the eastern route and $3.6 billion to the central route. A major challenge in the South North Water Transfer Project was relocating around 330,000 individuals who resided near the Dangjiangku Reservoir at its former lower elevation and along the intended path. On October 18, 2009, officials in China started moving people from impacted regions in the provinces of Hebei and Henan. The completed Grand Aqueduct spanning around 1,264 kilometers, initially provided 9.5 cubic kilometers of water annually. By 2030, the project aims to increase this transfer to 12 to 13 cubic kilometers per year. While water transfers may decrease during dry years, the system is designed to ensure a flow of at least 6.2 cubic kilometers per year, with 95% confidence, providing a consistent supply even in drier periods. The water crisis, it impacts everyone, but farmers are hit the hardest due to economic factors. Cultivating crops such as wheat requires a lot of water, but it yields low profits. For instance, it requires a thousand tons of water to cultivate a ton of wheat, valued at only $150, whereas a factory can create a ton of steel, valued at $550, using just 14 tons of water. Considering the government's emphasis on generating jobs and enhancing the economy, it is more economical to prioritize industrial water demands over agricultural needs. This often leads to farmers being neglected. In Beijing, for instance, water was diverted from the Juma River to supply a petrochemical plant, leaving 120,000 villages downstream without water for irrigation. Pollution is another urgent concern, especially regarding the water being moved. As water travels from the south to the north, it frequently carries pollutants, including toxic substances and parasites that may present health hazards. Even with considerable attempts to purify the water prior to distribution, there remains risks of disease outbreaks happening because of insufficient treatment. The water treatment facilities participating in the process, they might not consistently succeed in completely removing toxic substances, sparking worries about the health and the safety of individuals depending on this water for everyday use. Lastly, climate change presents a risk to the project's long-term sustainability. Due to shifting climatic patterns, southern regions, including those near the Yangshi River, are facing more frequent droughts, particularly restricting the volume of water that can be moved northward. The overall sustainability of the project could be at risk if these droughts continue to intensify. The sustainability of the North-South Water Transfer Project is a topic of intense debate particularly as China encounters swiftly evolving environmental and demographic circumstances. On one side, the project represents a bold answer to the nation's persistent water shortage issues. However, specialists have raised questions regarding its ability to address future demands effectively. 
the growth of China's population and the growth of their economy is putting considerable pressure on its limited water resources, home to more than 1.4 billion people and an economy dependent on agriculture, industry and urban growth, the country's demand for water is rapidly increasing. At the same time, many rivers in China are experiencing overexploitation, whereas some are dying or significantly contaminated. For example, over the last 20 years, half of China's rivers have just vanished, clearly highlighting the extent of water loss and environmental damage. Experts are beginning to doubt whether the North-South Water Transfer Project can continue to provide a long-term answer. Some believe that the project's capacity to provide enough clean water to northern regions that may soon be surpassed by the nation's continuing environmental degradation and its rising water demand. According to many others, this project is just a temporary fix, basically a band-aid to solve the water crisis. They believe that more efforts are required if people want a permanent solution to China's water crisis. They may also include water conservation, climate adaptation strategies, and pollution control. While the South-North Water Transfer Project stands as one of the most unique engineering marvels, the question whether it will sustain or not, that still remains. China's attempt to handle this project amid considerable challenges will be vital in determining whether the water crisis is resolved in the future. What part of the South-North Water Transfer Project are you most excited about? Share your thoughts in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on the most thrilling architectural changes happening around the globe. Let's continue this discussion. Are there any other projects you'd want us to consider? Leave your suggestions below. This has been Big Builds. See you in the next one.